Dave Palumbo here for another RX Muscle Rant brought to you by Redcon One. Today I want to talk about thyroid hormone. A lot of people, you know, don't really understand how thyroid hormone works. And to be honest with you, it's a pretty simple hormone. It's a pretty easy system and there's nothing too complicated about it. That's why it's very easy to replace it if people, you know, have thyroid insufficiency. And, and believe it or not, a large population of, our, of, our, of people out there, not just bodybuilders, but everyone in the general population, tend to have a, a lot of hypothyroidism, uh, more prevalent in women than in men, believe it or not. Now, let's talk about how the thyroid gland works before we talk about how it interacts with other drugs and other, and other scenarios like dieting. First of all, the thyroid gland is, is located right here around your, your uh, voice box, and there's two lobes to it. And it produces a hormone known as thyroxin, or we abbreviate that as T4. Okay, it does this in response to a signal it receives from the pituitary gland in your brain. Okay, and that pituitary gland sends a signal known as TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. That tells the thyroid gland to produce this T4 or, or thyroxin hormone. You know, in school they teach, I remember learning that, and, and I always thought that thyroxin was, was the thyroid hormone that did things in the body. But it turns out that that T4 needs to be converted into an activated form, okay? What it's turned into is what we call triiodothyronine, also known as T3. T3 is active thyroid hormone. And that's what indicates how fast or slow your metabolic rate will be. Okay, so T4 really has nothing to do with your metabolism. It's all T3. So when you go for blood work and you check your thyroid status, a lot of times these doctors will just check TSH and they'll say, oh, you're a lot low or high according to what those values are, which is really not accurate because it, you, I gotta find out what your thyroid hormone status is. Another, a lot of times doctors will just do TSH and T4 thinking that's adequate. Once again, you could have normal T4 levels, but if your T3, if, it, if the T4 is not converting to T3, you can still be low thyroid. So you need to check TSH, T4, and T3. And the only value that's really you know, relevant in terms of you know, how you look and feel is T3. However, there could be problems with you know, why T3 is normal and the other hormones are off. You know? So the, the question arises, when you take, you know, I guess, drugs like growth hormone, okay? Everyone, I've heard the gamut of people saying things like thyroid suppresses, I mean, like GH suppresses your thyroid, GH stimulates it. No one really knows what anything does. And everyone thinks you need to take thyroid hormone. And I've heard people say you need to take T4, you need to take T3. And, and no one can give you an answer why, okay? Everyone just has heard it from some guy in the gym or has read it on some website. And the bottom line is, going back to the science of what I told you earlier, T3 is the important variable here. We need optimal T3 levels so that everything works well in the body. When you take growth hormone, okay, a lot of people have reported that, you know, it drops your thyroid gland. And if you look at your, only look at your T4 levels on your thyroid your test, you would say that's correct because T4 seems to go down when you take growth hormone. But T4 is not the active thyroid hormone. When you look at T3 levels when you're on growth hormone, however, it goes up. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is growth hormone is, tell, is telling T4 to convert to T3. It's facilitating that T4 to T3 conversion. It's making it happen more, okay? Which is probably what's contributing to some of the fat loss that, that the growth hormone uh, I guess you could say, causes in the body. You take GH, we know you burn fat. Uh, why? Well, it's probably twofold. One is a direct mobilization of fat from the fat cells. The other is an indirect effect from causing more T4 to convert to T3. Now, when that happens, is that a problem in the body? No, I think it's an advantage of anything because, because you're, you're gonna put yourself in a better fat burning state. It's, not, it's certainly not bad for your body to be lower in T4 because T4 is inactive. So it's basically just activating more thyroid hormone. Now, sometimes you might see a, your TSH levels go down a little bit because when, when T3 goes up, obviously it tells the pituitary, actually it's via the hypothalamus, it tells those glands in the brain, uh, we don't need to produce as much thyroid hormone, but I haven't seen that. So in other words, even though T3 is, is elevating and T4 is decreasing, TSH usually is still normal, okay? So where are we at? Where we're at is that growth hormone 
does increase thyroid output in the sense that it creates more T3 uh, to be available in the body, okay? And the lack of T4 is not a problem, okay? You don't need to supplement with it because why? If you take more inactive thyroid, what's going to happen? Nothing. It's not going to convert to active form. We already have a super physiological amount of T3 being produced in the body because of this GH uh, um, use. Now, if you are a person who is hypothyroid, in other, in other words, your thyroid stops working for whatever reason, you can blame it on things you did in bodybuilding, too many stimulants or bad genetics or whatever the case may be, most of the time it's due to an autoimmune issue where your body's immune system will attack the thyroid gland and, and, and stop it from working. Let's assume that that's the case, because that's the case probably in most of the people who have thyroid insufficiency. So you go for blood work and you find out your TSH is low, or your TSH will be high, because what's happening is your T4 and T3 output is low, your, your, your brain is trying to tell the thyroid, produce more thyroid hormone, so it raises TSH and the, the, the thyroid gland can't respond for whatever reason. So you'll see on, on, on blood work, high TSH, low T4, low T3. When that happens, what do they do? Well, you would think, well, take T3, right? Because that's the active thyroid hormone. Well, that's not the solution because it's very hard to dose how much T3 you really need in your body. Who, your body knows best how much T3 it needs. So what they do is they, they replace the T4 component. So most people who are on, uh, who have thyroid problems will take Synthroid, which is a synthetic form of T4. Uh, the great thing about that is if you take a little too much, it really doesn't matter because your body only converts what it needs into T3. So your body self-regulates how much T3 you're using. Now people have asked me um, what happens you know, when you take growth hormone when you're on T4 replacement. Well, there's plenty of T4 present. Your body will convert more of the T4 just like it does in a natural state into T3, and you'll have higher T3, and your T4 will be a little lower, okay? But that doesn't matter, right? Because the ultimate important factor here is T3 levels. When T3 is elevated, we have a faster metabolic rate. Now, to a certain point, that's good. To a, if it gets too fast, if, in other words, if you were just popping T3 pills, which are known as Cytomel, that's the brand name, all day long, you would probably give yourself a heart attack because too much thyroid hormone can cause arrhythmias in the body, heart arrhythmias, which can lead to obviously death. We don't want that. Um, once again, the dosage is pretty high to get to that point. So what's the answer to the question, I'm taking growth hormone, what do I do? Nothing, don't take anything. Go for blood work every so often, check your levels if TSH and T4, okay, if TSH is normal and T4 is a little low and T3 is a little high, that's to be expected, okay? If T3, T4 are, are both very low, and your TSH is high, then you know you have some kind of thyroid issue unrelated to the growth hormone you're taking, but it just could be you have an underlying thyroid issue. A lot of people have thyroid issues, they don't even know about it because they never go for blood work. So, you know, someone can go for blood work and find out that they have low thyroid, and they're like, oh man, it probably was from, what did I do last week? That's what probably caused it. No, it could have been from 10 years ago or five years ago, and you were progressively getting worse. So hopefully you guys got to have a little better understanding of the dynamics of, of TSH, T4, T3, and, and how growth hormone can positively or negatively affect that. Now, interestingly, a ketogenic diet, which is a very low carb diet, okay, which has very low insulin output, can negatively affect this T4 to T3 conversion. Because the body senses that it's in a calorie deprived state, it senses whatever insulin levels are super low for long periods of time, the body knows you're, you're, you're cutting back calorie intake. Uh, specifically carbohydrates. So what does your body do? It, it can slow the T4 to T3 conversion down. That's why I recommend that people have what I call a cheat meal. Some people call it a refeed meal. That seems to be the new millennial like term for it. But uh, I like to call it a cheat meal. It sounds a little sexier. And you know, you use the cheat meal once a week, okay, to stimulate insulin release uh, because you're eating carbs in that meal, obviously. When you release insulin, T4 to T3 conversion will restore itself to normal levels and it will stop that slowing down of your thyroid that can happen when you're dieting for long periods of time on the same type of a low carb diet. Once again, simple solution, but you need to know why you do it. Some people just think I'm giving them a cheat meal because I feel bad for them once a week. And they're like, I really don't need it. I can No, I'm like there's a reason for it. Now that doesn't mean you should eat like it's your last meal on earth or you're like you're going to the electric chair tomorrow, but you can certainly put in you know, have a plate of pasta or have, you know, a piece to a pizza or if you want to have, a, you know, a, a burger or fries or whatever, enjoy yourself. Just don't go nuts, that's all, because if you go nuts, it's too much and then you set yourself back a whole week.
All right, guys, hopefully this helped uh, out a little bit, gave you some more clarification on what thyroid hormone is and how it works in the body and how it interacts with diet and drug and or drugs. Uh, guys, if you like these videos, subscribe to the channel, you know, click turn your notifications on, hit like and put your comments below. I read them, well, I try to read them all, good and bad. <laughs> I'm Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle rant brought to you by Redcon One.